Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Northland DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how I installed a stealth snorkel on my uh, Generation 1 Can-Am Outlander Max. So this one is uh, 2007, and uh, these photos and videos were taken quite some time ago, so uh, please forgive me for not being able to fill in the gaps because I don't have the bike anymore, so I can't make any new video. Okay, so let's get started. I definitely recommend that you uh, disconnect your battery because you may wind up uh, pinching or cutting the wires in the process of doing this and that wouldn't be good. So uh, 10 millimeter wrench, take that bolt off and you're good to go. Next, you're gonna have to remove some body panels, the three you see here. Then you'll have to uh, lift up the instrument cluster pod so you can work underneath it. Here's a short clip to give you a sense of orientation for this video. This short section of pipe here is uh, the inlet to the air box. It's located in the left front fender well underneath this cover here. Removing the cover exposes the inlet for the air box and also the inlet for the CVT cooling. Yeah, so here we go, making the first cut. When you're doing this, you got to make sure that you've got enough clearance for the rubber pipe uh, connector and the hose clamp. And it's really tight, as you can see in this photo here, where the bracket, the connecting bracket to the, the chassis is. There's not much room. Here's a photo of the airbox inlet looking from the top down. You need to cut off this tab. In this photo, I'm judging where to make the cut on the inlet to the air box. I've got to make the pipe a little bit shorter. Please note, there are several photos in here that are showing me using a 2-inch uh, pipe for the inlet uh, to the air box. And uh, I, even though I was told that uh, that would work with 2-inch uh, on both inlets, it does not work. I had to change uh, this inlet to inch and a half. Okay, here's me making the cut. It winds up that it, uh, halfway across the, the little tab I cut off uh, worked out well. I had to make an adjustment to the length of the uh, rubber coupling so that the Street 90 would fit into it properly. And just as a note, the Street 90 has uh, one side that's the same size as the pipe so it fits inside the rubber coupling. The other side is expanded and so it'll fit uh, on the outside of a pipe. Again, please disregard that we're using a two inch pipe here because we're actually using inch and a half. Here's another quick orientation clip. The pipe you see in the bottom of this picture here is the inlet for the CVT cooling. A two inch straight rubber coupling will fit here perfectly. And for this pipe work, we are going to use two inch pipe. Here's a shot of what that'll look like. You'll need to move these wiring connections out of the way and bend up this tab so that the pipework can fit through. So here's a photo of the point when I realized that uh, both pipes being two inch are not gonna fit properly. The cowling, uh, the uh, pod rather, will not fit over top of it. At this point, I'm changing the pipework to the airbox intake to the proper size. In the foreground here, you see an inch and a half straight uh, rubber coupling. In the background, you've got an inch and a half tight street 90 and an inch and a half 45. Here's what the job looks like after the change. Working up towards the instrument cluster uh, pod, you've got a two inch uh, street 45 and an inch and a half street 45 couple of short pieces of pipe and voila, the intake part is done. Okay, well today we're going to uh, finish off the job that I uh, started earlier with uh, the uh, snorkeling. Uh, 
first t the first time I uh, worked on this, <coughs> uh, the snorkels for the intake for the breather and for the intake for the CVT are uh, now up into the pot up here, which I'm going to have to take off again to show you when I get closer to doing the finishing the exhaust, which is what we're going to be working on today. And uh, so this is all kind of an experiment. Uh, there's lots of ideas and stuff on the internet, many of which uh, I've actually used myself. And uh, some uh, there today we're gonna I'm gonna try an experiment that's uh, a little bit uh, different. Anyway, so as you can see, I got the seat off. So if you don't know how to get the seat off, perhaps you should. Uh, look at another video instead of this one because it's not going to get any easier than that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pop off the, the cowling here. Which just seems to come out pretty easy. And uh, we need to pop off the side pieces. So here's the breather box, and before I forget, you can see this is uh, the pipe work I've done in here underneath the, uh, the cowl uh, for the instrument cluster, or the pod as some people call it. Um, I got uh, part of this idea from a few different uh, sites. Uh, we've got inch and a half pipe on the intake for this and uh, two inch on the CVT exhaust or intake rather but anyways uh, I have seen people uh, cut holes in here and put screen work on here and uh, they have had some success with that although some people say that they are getting still getting crap inside their uh, their breather anyhow today what we're gonna do is I want to take I got to take this off here is the exhaust for the existing exhaust the factory one for uh, the CVT and uh, I'm hoping although I don't know that uh, this is going to be roughly equivalent to a two inch piece of um, like a two inch piece of pipe I've got a coupling a rubber coupling I'm going to try to put on there and most people go in behind here close to the exhaust in through that hole and then come up the other side I'm thinking that I'm gonna to try to come around the back side around here and eliminate all the problems with the people have been having with the exhaust so we'll give that a try and see where that goes I like could uh, ratchet set here today because I can't drive the car in here just yet the only way I can get in right now to this spot is by ATV. Uh, okay, so that looks a little on the cheesy side. Uh, speaking of cheesy, let's bring over this cheesy little ratchet set here. Because like I said, I don't have my good one. Yeah, it's looking like 10 mil. So it's the first time I've had this apart. Uh, I don't know how much success I'm going to have without breaking stuff, but time will tell. Okay. So off comes. got to watch my thawing steaks don't get taken away here by by something anyway so here's the part and uh, I wanted to see whether or not it looks like we got any water in there last week 
I was out riding and I'm pretty sure the water came in through here instead of my intake. There's a two inch, two inch to inch and a half fitting. The pipe I have that I'm going to be using is going to be inch and a half. And look at that, not bad for an old guy. Looks like that's going to work. So, the question remaining is whether or not, let's see that's on such an angle there. Maybe that's why the boys have been going in through the backside, eh? Because it is on such an angle. Uh, the plan is, was supposed to be coming up into the pot and coming back down like that because I don't want the hot exhaust from the CVT going into the intake for um, the uh, the engine and for the other and for the CVT as well so anyhow that's going to take a little bit of wang dangling to figure that out okay okay it looks like I need to cut Okay, so I've cut off a, uh, oh, I don't know, about a four inch or three and a half inch piece of uh, inch and a half pipe here. And uh, what we're going to do is, if we're going down in through here, you can see there's a space right in through here where the, the exhaust can point down. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to glue this extra long elbow here. This is the two, you know, I don't know if you can find this in a street elbow or not, but... Uh, we need to hook it on to here anyway, so I guess it doesn't need to be. But uh, anyhow, uh, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to glue this in here, and we're going to attach it on to the inch and a half just like that. And then we're going to we're going to be taping it on or doing some other ways of sealing it on this end onto here. Now if you had a street 90 you could use a um, a coupling. I don't have one and I'm out five kilometers from my car right now so I'm not going to get one. What I am going to do is I'm just going to use some rubber tape and I'm going to tape it on there and uh, we're just going to hope for the best. Got a tight 90 so that when the bike's moving forward, the air is not, the uh, exhaust is just moving back, right? Otherwise, if it's sitting up like this, there's a possibility shit could be getting in here. This will go down like that, like that, yes, and Okay, so as you can see, we've got the exhaust pipe coming up here and going down into, so it's pointing down. So my air is not going up into the pod here where the rest of my intake is. And we don't want that. So what we do want is for that to be sealed on there, taped on. It'll be easier if I take this out to work on it. This stuff is great. And once it burns, that's good. Oh, you bastard. Alright. I'm going to get some regular electrical tape on the outside of it to seal the deal. So again, you might want to get an extended 
street 90 and use a regular coupling, inch and a half coupling. It'll cost you another 10 bucks maybe, but you're worth it. All right, so here we go. Perfect. So the shift linkage is free, right? Shift linkage is completely free. So my aim here is to try to keep this PVC pipe, or a, yeah, this PVC pipe that I bought away from the shift linkage. Because, and I suggest that you use better tie wraps than what I have here, because these are shit. I've got three different kinds of 90s here. As you can see, I've got a tight 90, a medium 90, and a long 90. And uh, I want to see which one's going to work best in this situation. So here we are here. This medium 90 will work just fine. The difference between these two is you got a lot more air restriction when you have a tight 90. Less air restriction, less air restriction again for the flow. So could we use this? We could actually use this, yes. We could use this extended 90. I'd have to cut, if we had that, we'd have to cut three inches of pipe to join the two together. And I'm going to have to take this out and wrap it with uh, insulation and foil uh, so that uh, the exhaust, as you can see the exhaust in there, you don't want the exhaust to burn up that shit. So we're going to take it off and we're going to wrap it all up, but we want to get everything joined up first. But I think that's what we'll do. The least amount of restriction is the best. So there's three inches. So I think we'll pull this off and we need to put this one piece of pipe in here and wrap this with the wrap this up with the uh, insulation and the tape. Well, it's pretty ugly looking. All right. I think that's going to be all right. And we'll just turn that a little bit this way. Okay. Okay. We're going to be we're going to be looking pretty good, I think. Now, the only problem with that is Where's my other tight 90? Well, that. All right. 
we're, we're, we're far enough away from the exhaust, I think. I'm just concerned when we're right close to the exhaust. I was a little bit concerned, but we're looking in good shape. And uh, the line we need is right, basically right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and grease this up, put it in. That's, that's the line we need. So that's all sealed up. And now we just gotta cut this pipe to fit in here. Right there seems to be good. Okay, so here's uh, pretty much the finished system, and I've got the uh, the coupling uh, two inch to inch and a half, uh, and I've got a tight 90, or no, sorry, it was a big 90, a large 90, and then another large extended 90, as they call it. These are not street 90s. The